Hello again everybody and welcome. Today we look at series on parallel circuits. Before we do, we begin with a quick recap on current electricity. Using a simple setup of a circuit, we have a battery, which is our power source, in this case a DC power source, an ammeter which measures current, fixed resistor which is also called our load, and a rheostat. In the previous video, there was an explanation of what the rheostat was used for in varying both current and voltage. And of course, lastly, we have parallel or opposite to a fixed resistor or voltmeter. Please pay attention to the polarities again of the battery, ammeter and voltmeter. This setup is actually used for Ohm's law, but what is Ohm's law? Ohm's law is the direct proportional relationship between voltage and current. If we have a setup of a simple circuit, please note that electrons are the charges that actually flow from the negative to the positive terminal of any battery. However, we look at conventional current as being capital I. Current being defined as the rate of flow of charge, which of course gives us our equation I is equal to Q on T. If we make Q the subject of the formula, we obtain the equation Q equals I T. Keep in mind also that current is measured in amperes, charge is in coulombs, and time, the SI unit, seconds. So by definition of what an ampere is, it's defined as one coulomb that travels per second. Our equation of Q equals IT from this equation is just one equation for charge. But since electrons are the charges that actually flow through our circuit, we can note that Q also equals NE, where N is equal to the number of electrons, E the basic unit for charge, which of course is 1.6 by 10 to the power of min minus 19 coulombs. This is a constant. So at any given point in time, these two equations are equal, equal to each other. Now let's look at voltage. Voltage is dubbed the driving force of a circuit, the driving force of the charges that move through a circuit. But what is voltage in fact? It is also called potential difference, yes, and is applied from the battery itself. But there is some force required for these charges to actually move through a circuit. Where does that force come from? That force comes from the power source, the battery, and that in, in essence is called the voltage. So in moving, a charge must do work. What is voltage therefore? The work done per unit charge in moving that charge from one point to another in a circuit. So we get an equation where voltage equals work over charge, the unit of which is volts. A volt is therefore equal to or equivalent to one joule per coulomb. It is also important to remember that voltage is measured across a device from one point to another. A voltmeter measures voltage and is placed parallel to or across a load. Voltmeters make their own loop, whereas ammeters are connected in series to a load or within the same continuous loop. Resistance. Now, resistance in the is made up of a combination, in fact, of both voltage and current. And since voltage is measured across and current is measured through a device, we say it is a ratio of the voltage across to the current through any device or load, the unit of which is ohm, also, defi also defined as 1 volt per amp or 1 volt per ampere. Devices can be placed in series or parallel, which brings us to our next topic, our main topic, series and parallel circuits. Series circuits are considered to be in one continuous loop, whereas parallel circuits are, cr are created across junctions, a junction being a point where wires tend to intersect or meet. We begin with series circuits where we have two resistors within the same loop. Now if we consider these two resistors to be two tunnels, then, and of course the current, the conventional current being perhaps cars, then the same number of cars must pass through the same two tunnels. Hence in a series circuit, the current is the same. But what if both tunnels were made up of different surfaces, perhaps one being a smooth and the other being a rough surface or road? Wouldn't the cars passing through the rough surface do more work? Similarly, the charges must do more work to pass through that resistor. As a result of that, the voltage across both resistors are going to be different in a series circuit. If we attach two voltmeters across these two resistors, once they are not identical, they obtain different voltage values. 
These voltage values, if called V1 and V2 respectively for R1 and R2 or two resistors, will add up to give us the voltage from the power supply, in this case our battery. So in a series circuit, we can say that the voltage splits or adds up, giving us a total of the voltage within the battery or power source at all times. So far, in a series circuit, therefore, we have that current is the same and voltage adds up. But what about resistance? If we use Ohm's law, which was explained as well in the last video, then we can simply get an equation for resistance. But where do we start? We begin by saying the total voltage in a circuit equals the sum of the resistor's voltages, V1 and V2. By substituting Ohm law, we get an equation where each voltage value is expressed as a product. But since current is the same, the total resistance in a series circuit also gives us a sum of the resistance in a series circuit. So at any given point in time, the equivalent resistance in a series circuit is given as the sum of all the different resistance values for any number of resistors or loads in a circuit. An example is given below, where given three resistors, where we can call them R1, R2, and R3, 10, 15, and 20 ohms respectively, we are asked to find the total resistance in that circuit, the total current, and of course the voltage across each resistor. How do we do that? We begin by labeling our equation, or resistors, sorry. We are given a 9 volt battery as our total voltage. Point to note, while current is the same in a series circuit, both voltage and resistances add up. So our total resistance in a series circuit, being the sum of all three, would give us 45 ohms. Our total current can be found using Ohm's law, where total voltage equals product of total current and total resistance. By transposing, we make total current the subject of the formula, so we get an equation where we will end up with an answer of 9 over 45, given us 0.2 or 0.2 amps which is the same for all three resistors. Remember, our resistors are our tunnels. The same number of cars must pass through all three tunnels. But what is the voltage across each resistor? Well, if we attach a voltmeter across each resistor, we will get or obtain a different voltage value. How do we get this? Again, use our equation for Ohm's law. Our equation for Ohm's law, therefore, being V equals IR, means that the current for each resistor is the same. As a result, by substituting our resistors for each different value for resistance, we get three different values for voltages, V1, V2, and V3 being 2, 3, and 4 volts respectively. Let's add them up to see if we get 9 volts. 2 plus 3 plus 4. Do we get 9? Definitely. Parallel circuits. Now for this example, we will use two resistors in parallel to each other. When wires cross or meet they create a junction using our same conditions as before if current represents the number of cars and the junction represents where two roads meet well these number of cars can actually travel two different paths in our example so there are multiple paths for which these charges therefore in a circuit can travel the same way cars can do the same as a result of that for objects placed or for loads more specifically placed in parallel since electrons have multiple paths to travel we can say therefore that the current splits some charges will travel along where r1 is situated and others along the leg of the circuit where r2 is situated for the next part of the circuit we will assume that r1 and r2 are identical just to be able to understand it better so that therefore there are two tunnels that are identical in surfaces if that be the case then this number of cars as they split in regarding cars therefore and passing through the same tunnels will do the same work through each tunnel as a result even though the current through each leg of the circuit is different they are actually these charges are actually doing the same work through each of the various resistors so what does that mean it means that if we attach a voltmeter across r1 and one across r2 their readings will be the same. Same as what? The same as the voltage or potential difference from the power source or battery in this case. While current through each leg of the circuit adds up to give us the total current from the battery, the voltage for each resistor remains the same as the battery's voltage. Using V equals IR again, we can make I the subject of the formula 
using our total current equation to therefore get our parallel resistance, which is 1 over r parallel or total equals 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2. So in a, in a parallel circuit, sorry, what can we conclude? In a parallel circuit, we say therefore that current adds up, voltage is the same, and resistance is obtained by the following equation. However, for two resistance, by using our simple concept of LCM, we obtain an equation where RP and not 1 over it is R1 multiplied by R2, product of it, divided by the sum of both R1 and R2. It only works for two resistors in parallel. If you do attempt to use this equation for more than two resistors, the LCM and both products are going to change. So it means, therefore, that it will not give us the same answer if more than two resistors are used. Let's look at a simple example where we have two resistors, again, in parallel, a battery, our ammeter to measure current. We're going to use a 9-volt battery again, a 12-ohm and a 15-ohm resistor, which we called R1 and R2, respectively. Once again, we are asked to calculate the total resistance in the circuit, also known as the equivalent resistance, the total current in the circuit, and the voltage across each resistor. There is a fourth part where we are now asked to find current across each resistor since we already know that the current will split at any junction. We can label our currents, therefore, as I1 and I2 across each leg of the circuit or across R1 and R2 respectively. Our total resistance uses, of course, the equivalent resistance for a parallel circuit, where we can use 1 over RP equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Please don't forget, find the LCM as normal. In this case, you can simply put it as a product of the two values as 120. We will therefore get 1 over RP as 18 over 120. If do not forget to invert, common mistake, if you do invert that value, 18, 120 over 18 therefore gives us 6.67. Or we can use our recently proven formula where we say R1 multiplied by R2 divided by the sum of both of them will give us the same value of 6.67. In this case, you do not need to invert your RP value or total resistance in a parallel circuit. What about a total current in a circuit? Well, we already have total voltage or 9 volt battery. We already have or have just found total resistance in a parallel circuit. So we therefore make IT the subject of the formula. We get 1.3 amps. But this is not the current through each resistor notwithstanding current splits through each resistor. However, voltage across each resistor is the same. The same as what again? Same as our 9 volt battery, our power source. We can, however, find the total current through each resistor, or more specifically, the current through each resistor. Once again, we use Ohm's law, and we make current, which we already labeled as I1 and I2 respectively, across R1 and R2, the subject of the formula. So V1 equals I1 plus R1 for our first resistor. Notwithstanding also that the voltage is constant, which is our 9 volt battery, we make I1 the subject of the formula. For our first resistor, we therefore get 0.75. Doing the same for the second resistor, its current is 0 0.60. Shouldn't they add up to give us a total current in the circuit? Well, let's check that. 0.75 plus 0 0.60 gives us, as a result, 1.35. Voila! <laughs>